World Wide Fund for Nature is an international non-governmental organization founded on April 29, 1961, working in the field of the biodiversity conservation and the reduction of humanity's footprint on the environment. It was formally named the World Wildlife Fund, which remains its official name in Canada and the United States. It is the world's largest conservation organization with over 5 million supporters worldwide, working in more than 100 countries, supporting around 1,300 conservation and environmental projects. WWF is a foundation, with 55% of funding from individuals and bequests, 19% from government sources and 8% from corporations in 2014. The group's mission is to stop the degradation of the planet's natural environment and to build a future in which humans live in harmony with nature currently. Much of its work focuses on the conservation of three biomes that contain most of the world's biodiversity, oceans and coasts, forests, and freshwater ecosystems. Among other issues, it is also concerned with endangered species, sustainable production of commodities and climate change. The Conservation Foundation The Conservation Foundation, a precursor to WWF, was founded in 1947 by Fairfield Osborne in New York City in support of capitalism-friendly ecological practices. The Advisory Council included leading scientists such as Charles Sutherland Elton, G. Evelyn Hutchinson, Aldo Leopold, Carl Sauer, and Paul Sears. It supported much of the scientific work cited by Rachel Carson's Silent Spring, including that of John L. George, Roger Hale, Robert Rudd, and George Woodwell. In 1963, the Foundation held a conference and published a major report warning of anthropogenic global warming, written by Noel Eichhorn based on the work of Foundation Vice President F. Fraser Darling, Edward D. V., Eric Erickson, Charles Keeling, Gilbert Plass, Lionel Walford, and William Garnett. In 1990, the Conservation Foundation was merged into WWF after becoming an affiliate of WWF in 1985, when it became a distinct legal entity but with the same staff and board. The organization now known as the Conservation Foundation in the United States is the former Forest Foundation of DuPage County, Morgers Manifesto. The idea for a fund on behalf of endangered animals was initially proposed by Victor Stolham to Sir Julian Huxley in response to articles he published in the British newspaper The Observer. This proposal led Huxley to put Stolen in contact with Max Nicholson, a person who had had 30 years' experience of linking progressive intellectuals with big business interests through the political and economic planning think tank. Nicholson thought up the name of the organization. WWF was conceived on 29 April 1961 under the name of World Wildlife Fund, and its first office was opened on the 11th of September that same year in Morges, Switzerland. WWF was conceived to act as a funding institution for existing conservations groups such as the International Union for the Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources and the Conservation Foundation. Godfrey A. Rockefeller also played an important role in its creation, assembling the first staff. Its establishment marked with the signing of the Morges Manifesto, the founding document that sets out the fund's ideology. They need above all money to carry out missions and to meet conservation emergencies by buying land where wildlife treasures are threatened. Money, for example, to pay guardians of wildlife refuges. For e educations among those who would care for sending experts to danger spots and training, making it all possible that their needs are met before it is too late. Morges Manifesto Recent History WWF has set up offices and operations around the world. It originally worked by fundraising and providing grants to existing non-governmental organizations, based on the best available scientific knowledge and with an initial focus on the protection of endangered species. As more resources became available, its operations expanded into other areas such as the preservation of biological diversity, 
sustainable use of natural resources, the reduction of pollution, and climate change. The organization also began to run its own conservation projects and campaigns, and by the 1980s started to take a more strategic approach to its conservation activities. In 1986, the organization changed its name to Worldwide Fund for Nature, to better reflect the scope of its activities, retaining the WWF initials. However, it continued at that time to operate under the original name in the United States and Canada. That year was the 25th anniversary of WWF's foundation, an event marked by a gathering in Assisi. Italy to which the organization's international president HRH Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, invited religious authorities representing Buddhism, Christianity, Hinduism, Islam and Judaism. These leaders produced the Assisi declarations, theological statements showing the spiritual relationship between their followers and nature that triggered a growth in the engagement of those religions with conservation around the world. In the 1990s, WWF revised its mission to stop the degradation of the planet's natural environment and to build a future in which humans live in harmony with nature by conserving the world's biological diversity, ensuring that the use of renewable natural resources is sustainable, and promoting the reduction of pollution and wasteful consumption. WWF scientists and many others identified 238 ecoregions that represent the world's most biologically outstanding terrestrial, freshwater and marine habitats, based on a worldwide biodiversity analysis which the organization says was the first of its kind. In the early 2000s, its work was focused on a subset of these ecoregions, in the areas of forest, freshwater and marine habitat conservation, endangered species conservation, climate change, and the elimination of the most toxic chemicals. We shan't save all we should like to, but we shall save a great deal more than if we had never tried, Sir Peter Scott in 1996. The organization obtained general consultative status from UNESCO. Panda symbol. WWF's giant panda logo originated from a panda named Kekai that had been transferred from Beijing Zoo to London Zoo in 1958, three years before WWF became established, being famous as the only panda residing in the Western world at that time. Its uniquely recognizable physical features and status as an endangered species were seen as ideal to serve the organization's need for a strong, recognizable symbol that would overcome all language barriers. Moreover, the organization also needed an animal that would have an impact in black and white printing. The logo was then designed by Sir Peter Scott from preliminary sketches made by Gerald Watterson, a Scottish naturalist. However, the logo shown on this page is not the logo designed by Peter Scott but a later one, designed for WWF when it changed its name from World Wildlife Fund to Worldwide Fund for Nature. Current Approach to Conservation WWF's current strategy for achieving its mission specifically focuses on restoring populations of 36 species and ecological footprint in six areas. The organization also works on a number of global issues driving biodiversity loss and unsustainable use of natural resources, including finance, business practices, laws, and consumption choices. Local officers also work on national or regional issues. WWF works with a large number of different groups to achieve its goals, including other NGOs, governments, business, investment banks, scientists, fishermen, farmers and local communities. It also undertakes public campaigns to influence decision makers, and seeks to educate people on how to live in a more environmentally friendly manner. It urges people to donate funds to protect the environment. The donors can also choose to receive gifts in return. Publications WWF publishes the Living Planet Index in collaboration with the Zoological Society of London, along with ecological footprint calculations. 
The index is used to produce a bi-yearly Living Planet report giving an overview of the impact of human activity on the world. The organization also regularly publishes reports, fact sheets and other documents on issues related to its work, in order to raise awareness and provide information to policy and decision makers. Policy-making policies of the WWF are made by the board members who are elected for three-year terms. The executive team guides and develops WWF's strategy. There is also a national council which stands as an advisory group to the board and finally a team of scientists and experts in conservation who research for WWF. National and international law plays an important role in determining how habitats and resources are managed and used. Laws and regulations become one of the organization's global priorities. The WWF has been opposed to the extraction of oil from the Canadian tar sands and has campaigned on this matter. Between 2008 and 2010 the WWF worked with the cooperative group, the UK's largest consumer cooperative, to publish reports which concluded that exploiting the Canadian tar sands to their full potential would be sufficient to bring about what they described as runaway climate change. Carbon capture and storage technology cannot be used to reduce the release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere to a level comparable to that of other methods of oil extraction. The $379 billion which is expected to be spent extracting oil from tar sands could be better spent on research in development in renewable energy technology, and the expansion of tar sands extraction poses a serious threat to the caribou in Alberta. The organization convinces and helps governments and other political bodies to adopt, enforce, strengthen and or change policies, guidelines and laws that affect biodiversity and natural resource use. It also ensures the governments to consent and or keeps their commitment to international instruments relating to the protection of biodiversity and natural resources. In 2012, David Nussbaum, chief executive of WWF UK, spoke out against the way shale gas is used in the UK, saying, the government must reaffirm its commitment to tackling climate change and prioritize renewables and energy efficiency. Criticism WWF has been accused by the campaigner Corporate Watch of being too close to businesses to campaign objectively. WWF claims partnering with corporations such as Coca-Cola, Lafarge, Carlos Slims and IKEA will reduce their impact on the environment. WWF received 56 million euros from corporations in 2010, accounting for 11% of total revenue for the year. The money was deposited in a Swiss WWF bank account. In 1989, Charles de Haes, then WWF Director General, transferred 500,000 British pounds back to Bernhard for what he called a private project. It was then revealed, in 1991, that Prince Bernhard had used the money to hire Kaz International, owned by Shash founder David Sterling, for an operation called Project Lock, during which mercenaries fought poachers in nature reserves. Mekong River Dolphins report in June 2009, Touch Seam Tanner. Chairman of Cambodia's Commission for Conservation and Development of the Mekong River Dolphins Ecotourism Zone, charged that the WWF had misrepresented the danger of extinction of the Mekong Dolphin in order to boost fundraising. He called the WWF report unscientific and harmful to the Cambodian government and threatened the WWF's Cambodian branch with suspension unless they met with him to discuss his claims. Touch Seam Tanner later said he would not press charges of supplying false information and would not make any attempt to prevent WWF from continuing its work in Cambodia since it had been a communication issue between the organizations alleging WWF documents did not sufficiently explain the findings in the reports, clarified after this. In January 2012, they signed the Croatia Declaration on the Conservation of the Mekong River Irrawaddy Dolphin, along with WWF and the Cambodian Fisheries. 
administration, an agreement binding the parties to work together on the roadmap addressing dolphin conservation in the Mekong River. Pandeleaks in 2012, German investigative journalist Wilfried Wiesmann published a book called The Silence of the Pandas. It became a bestseller in Germany, but was banned from Britain until 2014, when it was released under the title of Pandeleaks. After a series of injunctions and court orders, the book criticizes WWF for its supposed involvement with corporations that are responsible for large-scale destruction of the environment, such as Coca-Cola, and gives details into the existence of the secret 1001 Club, whose members, Huseman claims, continue to have an unhealthy influence on WWF's policy-making. However, WWF has sought to deny the allegations made against it. Our documentary The German Public Television Art aired a documentary on the 22nd of June 2011 that claimed to show how the WWF cooperates with corporations, such as Monsanto, providing sustainability certification in exchange for donations, i.e., greenwashing. WWF has denied the allegations. By encouraging high-impact ecotourism, the program alleges that WWF contributes to the destruction of habitat and species it claims to protect. WWF India is not active at the Tiger Reserve given as the example, but it is active elsewhere seeking to limit adverse tourism impacts and better sharing of tourism benefits to local communities. The program also alleges WWF certified a palm oil plantation operated by Wilmar International, a Singaporean company, on the Indonesian island of Borneo, even though the establishment of the plantation led to the destruction of over 14,000 hectares of rainforest. Only 80 hectares were ultimately conserved, the art documentary claims. According to the program, two orangutans live on the conserved land, but have very slim chances of survival because no fruit trees remain and their habitat is too small to sustain them. To survive, they steal palm nuts from the neighboring plantation, thereby risking being shot by plantation workers. WWF notes that the plantation filmed is P.T. Rimba Harapan Sakti, which has not been certified as a sustainable producer by the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil. Aerial photographs show that around 4,000 hectares, or about a third of the forest cover, has been conserved. Hunting the president of honor of WWF in Spain used to be King Juan Carlos I, who has been a known hunting enthusiast since 1962. In that year, when he was 24 years old, he was invited by the German Baron Werner von Alvensleben to a hunt in Mozambique. Since then, the king has taken part in hunting forays in Africa and Eastern Europe. In October 2004, he was a member of a hunt in Romania that killed a wolf and nine brown bears, including one that was pregnant. According to the Romanian newspaper Romania Libera, he was also accused by a Russian official of killing a bear called Mitrofan, supposedly after giving vodka to the animal, in an episode that sparked controversy in Spain, although the claim was never proven. In the same year, according to The Guardian, the Polish government allowed him to kill a European bison in Bialowiza forest, even though it is an endangered species. Further controversy arose in April 2012 when the king's participation in an elephant hunt in Botswana was discovered only after he returned to Spain, on an emergency flight after tripping over a step and fracturing his hip. Many Spanish environmental groups and leftist parties criticized the monarch's hobby, and the WWF stripped him of the honorary position in July 2012, in an extraordinary assembly by 94% of the votes of the members. Prince Charles, the UK head of the WWF, also enjoys hunting. He is believed, however, to adhere to legal British traditional hunting and speaks out against hunting endangered species. Citation 125 needed. Date equals February 2015. Presidents. Source. WWF Presidents The 1001. A Nature Trust.
In the early 1970s, Prince Bernhard, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh and a few associates set up the The 1001, a nature trust to handle the WWF's administration and fundraising. 1001 members each contributed $10,000 to the trust. WWF initialism dispute in 2000, the World Wide Fund for Nature sued the World Wrestling Federation for unfair trade practices. Both parties had shared the initials WWF since 1979. The conservation organization claimed that the wrestling company had violated a 1994 agreement regarding international use of the WWF initials. On August 10, 2001, a UK court ruled in favor of the Worldwide Fund for Nature. The World Wrestling Federation filed an appeal in October 2001. However, on May 5, 2002, the World Wrestling Federation changed its web address from www.com to wwe.com, and replaced every WWF, a reference on the existing site with WWE, as a prelude to changing the company's name to World Wrestling Entertainment. Its stock ticker also switched from WWF to WWE. Abandonment of the initialism did not end the two organizations' legal conflict. Later in 2002, the World Wide Fund for Nature petitioned the court for $360 million in damages, but was not successful. A subsequent request to overturn by the World Wide Fund for Nature was dismissed by the British Court of Appeal on June 28, 2007. In 2003, World Wrestling Entertainment won a limited decision which permitted them to continue marketing certain pre-existing products with the abandoned WWF logo. However, WWE was mandated to issue newly branded merchandise such as apparel, action figures, video games, and DVDs with the WWE initials. Additionally, the court order required the company to remove both auditory and visual references to WWF in its library of video footage outside the United Kingdom. Starting with the 1000th episode of Raw in July 2012, the WWF Scratch logo is no longer censored in archival footage. In addition, the WWF initials are no longer censored when spoken or when written in plain text in archival footage. In exchange, WWE is no longer permitted to use the WWF initials or logo in any new, original footage, packaging, or advertising, with any old-school logos for retro-themed programming now using the original WWF logo, but modified without the F.